If I could describe to give my life tour in one word, it would be vulnerability. Showing up for yourself is so important. Welcome to the Get My Life Tour. I'm your host, Lydia T. Blanca. Hey, y'all, and welcome to the Get My Life Tour. It is me, your host, Lydia T. Blanco. And as always, I am excited that you decided to show up and take center stage in your life. It means the world to me that you are tuned in to the Get My Life Tour, that you are on tour, and that you're practicing vulnerability. You are dope, if no one has told you already today. You know what? I am so hype right now because there is nothing like going shopping, sifting through your items in the closet. If you are like me, you are someone who enjoys fashion, complimenting random people on the streets, Googling things so you can figure out who, what, where, and how much, or you follow people closely who know exactly what they are talking about as it relates to style and fashion and looking good. I am so hyped because I have Morgan Wider here, who is a personal style expert, author, and speaker. She is so dope. So let me just give you some background. Two years ago, I met her at the International Day of Purpose, and I sat in on her workshop about the business of looking good. And I was like, okay, number one, that is such a dope title. I need to be there. It actually reminded me of my days at Bennett College and all the programming we did around etiquette and presentation and looking good. I walked into the room and I'm just going to call her a stallion because she is. And she was there at the front of the room and she was getting us together about how we looked and it was to be appreciated. Morgan is a wardrobe stylist. I've already told you that she is a best selling author and speaker, and she advises executives, entrepreneurs, and college students on how to build wardrobes that convey confidence and competence. Look, she just wrote this incredible book, The Worthy Wardrobe, Your Guide to Style Shopping in Seoul, and I am so honored to have her here today on the Get My Life Tour. Look, without further ado, help me welcome Morgan to the Get My Life Tour. Morgan. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I've been holding in my giggles. I have never been called a stallion before. This is like, I'm over here Yo, feeling high. Morgan, how tall are you? <laughs> I'm you five are ten. a stallion. Like, you, I mean, it's just <laughs> what it is. Like, come on. You are. Thank you, friend. I'll take you, that. I'll you know what? That. You are Morgan <laughs> the stallion. Oh, my God. Oh, my Morgan the stallion. It just clicked. It just clicked. Totally, totally. I might, I'm going to have to use that. You're always so full of great ideas. I love talking to you, Lydia. <laughs> Thank I love you. It. You know, I just intro you in, but when I tell you I am really excited to have this conversation, I feel like I can't say it enough. And it's because of who you are. Like when I walked into that room, oh, I was like, okay, she clearly has something to give the people. And I was here for every ounce of it. But before we get into that, I know I've intro you in, but tell, you know, who, tell us who you are in your own words. I am a woman of faith who is really passionate about helping other women mm-hmm. know their worth. And clothes just happen to be the tool that which I do it. You know, I love that. And here's why. Thank you. It's because when we think about, or let me just speak for myself. When I think about women of faith, believers, um, as it relates to an experience or experiences that I had within the Christianity branch, I do not think about fashion. And I do not think about Mm. confidence because there is this entirely different narrative about presentation um, as it relates to faith, right? And when you show up, 
here you are in your bright colors or in your different patterns and you are a stallion, you show up, you have this, you know, beautiful, deep voice. It's very firm. And I'm just like, wait, who is that? It, it's, oh, thank you. <laughs> it's very, it's like this great surprise. It's very refreshing. Thank you. And, you know, for me, this aspect of faith and whatever you believe is important for me to, to tie into style because, as I mentioned in the book and I mentioned to, in some of my presentations, is I think all of us are here for a purpose to show love. And you can't be out here doing God's work if you don't look like you love yourself. And so you have to look the part. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> you just going to come out the gate like swinging. You can't, be out here, you can't be out here a missionary of love and you will not look like you love yourself and whatever that means for you. So that's that's why I, I, I help women realize that you have to put yourself first sometimes. And you're a mind, a body, and a spirit. And sometimes we 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 think that we're too holy or too smart or too whatever to think about our clothes and our image and they all work together. I'm so grateful that you are saying this because there is this mentality of humility that a lot of us as believers take on. And as it relates Mm -hmm. to our style, we don't think about presentation and how we show up as believers, you know, I can, I literally have these mental pictures of some people in leadership or those who follow, right. Who just show up and, you know, if they don't have the best or if they're just getting by, like, it's okay. And then you have another group of people who practice not looking like what they're going through. Right. And They show up a little bit more boastful, but I appreciate, (laughs) I appreciate you saying that because I also have this other visual of you like literally walking out some doors of a church screaming this, okay, to the entire congregation because we need to be checked. I was blessed. Yes, I was blessed to have uh, my pastor. uh, She just recently passed Dr. Barbara Lewis King of Hillside uh, here in Atlanta. She was over six feet tall and she loved clothes. Mm. And every month she wore the same color of whatever the theme of the month was. And she had just beautiful garments and jewelry. And she was unapologetic about who she was. And that to me was a, a signal as a woman of faith in most religions. We're taught to be in the background. We're taught to play small. We're taught to you know, be of service to everyone else but ourselves. And that was a big unlock for me of not apologizing for my, for my presence. Like God put me here and I have a purpose and I need to look the part. Mm. Not apologizing for my presence. Look, I feel like that should be (laughs) one of the definitions for showing up, not apologizing for my presence. Uh, I say now, like, because my story is one that I did a lot of hiding and, and my, my thing now is my wardrobe and my image announces my presence instead of apologizes for it. You know what? So you, you're doing this thing where you're dropping the mic repeatedly (laughs) and I'm not sure if it's going to work by the middle of this episode. So stop. No, I'm kidding. Look, Uh, I'm on a strong start. I'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. You know what? You are, you literally, the out the gate. The the out, the gate is out the gate. I'm here for it. Look, I'm just trying to hold on because you are really talking to me right now. Like you are literally preaching to my soul. Let me tell you something. I remember because of my physique thinking that I had to hide. I remember wearing long jackets or larger jackets in off seasons because I didn't want anyone looking at me. I didn't want to be perceived as a certain way. And, you know, the whole idea of being fast as a little black girl is very real. And that followed me up until I got to college. And then I learned that there was, I learned about femininity and etiquette and presentation And it takes so many of us so long to get there. Tell us more about the work that you're doing um, as you advise, you know, everyone from college students to executives and what that work really looks like. I will absolutely do that. But I want to honor you and say that I've had the same story of hiding and, and think that there was something wrong with my body and 
you know, that concept as, as young black females, whether we, you know, we're judged if we're too big or too curvy or too skinny. Like it's, it's all of us have something that we are carrying. And that is something that we all have to, like we have to shed some way, somehow or undress ourselves from. And that was part of my story too. And how I got to do the work that I do was learning that I'm worthy of being seen. And and we'll probably, you know, talk a little bit more of that, but the work that I do now with uh, my book and with my clients and whether it's individual clients or corporate clients is how do you show up authentically appropriate? What is your, what is the desired goal? What do you want to be known for? What do you want people to say about you? And then how do we build your image to match that? It's about giving you autonomy of, 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 of your narrative, you know, just how people you want to control the narrative people say about you. And a lot of that comes from your clothes and your wardrobe. And instead of feeling like you should wear the, the, the baggy jackets to hide your hips, why what's wrong with your hips? You know, there's one, there's ways to dress them that are flattering. So that's what I'm really passionate about doing is giving people permission to show up as their best selves in whatever way that works for them. Mm. When did you come out of hiding? It it wasn't that long ago, to be honest. It was it was probably it was 2016. So I was that was four years ago. I was in my early 30s. I had been jumping from bad boyfriend to bad boyfriend, bad job to bad job. Uh, was just feeling miserable, like there was always something wrong with me. That everyone had the answers to life that I didn't, and my wardrobe was big and baggy and long gray sweaters or really boring with like jeans that didn't fit because my weight was fluctuating. And when I found the church that I mentioned and started meditating and I started to like know myself and love myself, everything shifted around me, which ultimately led to me quitting my job, my corporate nine to five. And when I became an entrepreneur as a wardrobe stylist, I had loved clothes and I would buy them, but I never felt comfortable wearing them. I didn't want the attention. But when I became an entrepreneur, I had to start dressing the part. I had to start looking like my brand. And that was a a big awakening for me of getting visible and liking what I saw in the mirror and wearing the clothes that I had bought, but I kept the tags on and being okay with that attention because if people don't notice me, I don't eat. Mm. Mm. Wow. Being visible. If people don't notice me, I don't eat. Alignment with your Mm -hmm. brand. It, it 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 sounds like you gave your per, yourself permission to show up as you were doing the work. Visible. Absolutely, oh I had I, Lydia. I had to. I had to. You know, there is this decision we have to make about seeing ourselves and then mm-hmm. presenting ourselves and positioning ourselves to be visible. What did that? look like for you? Like you're going to church, right? You are getting in alignment with yourself, with the most high. And then you make this conscious decision to see yourself. That is work. That's tough work. Mm -hmm. It's scary work because you're looking at the unknown, right? Like unknown as in who you are and uncovering the trauma or the 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 beliefs that you have in your head and you have to determine if they're really yours, if they're someone else's, are they serving you? You are, your life gets shaken up because as you change, you can no longer stay in the same spaces or with the same people. Uh, it It's scary, but it's also when I finally learned how to surrender to the process and I'm so thankful for good girlfriends and a good community that walked me through this process. So I wasn't quote, like you're alone, but you're not by yourself. Mm. Um, and that was important for me, but it's, it's the scariest thing to do, but you have to, for me, it was before I started on this journey, I had a pain in my chest every day, literal physical pain that I didn't realize was related to the jobs I was in be- until I was coming back from vacation and walking out the door to go back to work and the chest pain came back. Mm-hmm. I hadn't realized it was gone when I was on vacation. So there's so many stories of, you know, the strong black woman syndrome that is killing a lot of us. And right. if you don't look in the mirror and do that work, it's, it really is a matter of life or death in so many ways. You know, I'm so glad you touched on that because it's hard to show up to places that we don't want to be. And look our best. I remember, 
oh gosh, I have, you know, my experiences going from bad job to bad job as well. And I remember being, well, I can't identify when my presentation began or begun to fall by the wayside. Like I can think back mm. on those moments and I'm just like, yeah, I really stopped caring at that point. Or yep, yeah, mm-hmm, at this point, by this point, I had a yep. uniform. I didn't care. It was on heavy rotation. Mm-hmm. And, I did too. You know, we do that to ourselves and a lot yep. of it is mental. And I believe it is also very spiritual, right? Our, we begin to look like what we are going through. And then absolutely we begin to retreat and we don't even realize that we're no longer showing up. Absolutely. I say that clothes are a barometer of what's going on in the inside. So within, so without. And so I can look at a woman and I can see what she thinks about herself mm. based on her wardrobe choices. Oh, that's deep. You know, that's deep. Yeah, it really is. There's so many times, uh, a little, a story that it's not in the book, but um, I often think about is a client called me a woman that I had known and she to me looked so she was super cute um I was like why you know why did you call me and she said I realized that I was sitting in this conference room um I'm the only black female of IT consultants and I realized that I've been wearing black every single day because I wanted to subconsciously blend into the conference room chairs she did not want to be seen Mm. and that's when she knew she had to make a change so like that's an example of how you start becoming invisible or what I call wearing an invisible wardrobe because you, you're not happy. You don't feel like you belong or you don't want to be noticed. Wow. You know, it's like I'm lost for words, but (laughs) (laughs) it's so damning the things that we experience in these spaces and the toll that it takes on as holistically, you know, I was having a conversation with an executive and she spoke about her experience once working in a law firm. And she said, everyone had that gray and black thing going on. And one day she decided to wear an orange blazer and everyone looked at her like she was crazy. And I was Mm. like, Oh, that's good. Tell me more. She made a decision to be seen as a black woman, but also to say, like, you know, there's something off here. And that orange blazer really communicated that to the people that she worked with. And gradually people began to add more color to their wardrobe. You know, and I I share that because when we show up, we can impact and transform people and spaces in that way as well. And that's the work that you do. I remember sitting in that room. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I'm so excited you mentioned this because this is what I call in the book and in my workshops, the hero's journey, mm. where for so many, I mean, these, I've interviewed all of these women for the book and I've worked with so many women and those executive level women, I'm, when I'm in their closets, there have been so many points. Here's a story. I was an ex- executive in her closet and she had like the all American preppy <laughs> waspy wardrobe, right? And that was, she was, she was head of DNI and she was quote unquote, the safe black girl. In her closet, there was this black drapey kind of like dramatic cloak kind of <laughs> Not shawl a cloak. thing. And I'm like, <laughs> what is this? What? It, 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 well, I don't want to say it because it was fabulous, but it was just, a, it was like a long kind of cardigan, black and very dramatic. And it didn't, I was like, one of these things not like the other, right? So I was like, what is this? Where did this come from? And she said, I bought this at um, a retreat and I've, I'm ready to wear it now. Like I'm, now that I've quote unquote made it, I want to show people more of who I am. And so I call this the hero's journey because there's so many senior level executives who have played it safe or did the, did the grays and the blues like the lawyer you just mentioned. And when they quote unquote made it is when they let their hair down. And so many of those women say, I regretted waiting so long mm. to make my, to, to change my hair to natural, to wear the orange blazer. And if they, they've encouraged me to start being who you are early so that you can, you can build a brand and build your tribe and attract the right people as you climb the ladder and you give permission to those of us who are lower than you to do the same thing. Just like you mentioned with that orange blazer. That's why I call it the hero's journey is because by you showing up as you and wearing the dramatic cloak or wearing the orange blazer or wearing your hair natural, whatever it is, you are literally telling other people it's okay to be yourself as well. I love it. I love it. You know, you read the room so well. 
at <laughs> International Day of Purpose. And I'll never, okay? I think it's because of you. I will never forget what I was wearing that day. I also was just at a very transitional point in my life. I believe I was getting ready to turn. Oh, sugar, how old did I turn? I think I just turned 29. And I had on wow. this yep. gingham. Is that the right print pronunciation is that it yeah. gingham yep. i had yep. on this gingham wrap top it was it's navy blue and white i don't think i own it anymore and i was having issues with that that top okay i thought it was so cute i actually ended up buying it a little bit too big because it was the last one but i thought i could freak it because it was a wrap shirt i tried double-sided tape it did not work and then i had this bobby pin that was unflattering. And I was like, oh my gosh, I hope no one can see it. And I was like, what did my mom do to try to hide these things in the past? I also had on these black pants. And I just remember sitting in that room and I was like, okay, you scan the room and you ask the question, who's did I? Girl? Let me tell oh, you, girl. Goodness. Yes, you did. Okay. You were like, who's <laughs> go-to is like black? Who lo- who's, who's the woman who loves all black? And then you asked about, you know, I think you asked if people wear clothes that are too big or who li- who's blazers and who likes the form-fitting clothes. And based on what people were wearing and based on the responses, you began to talk about body shapes or types. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. opposed to our actual sizes. And that... Nice. Say, uh, size versus shape. Size yep. versus... There you go. Look, you better know your stuff, okay? <laughs> size versus <laughs> shape. And I had been in so many different, like... Um, I, I participated in so many different workshops, this and that, in college and post, and I care about the way I look. But I learned so much about myself and it highlighted how much I do. I did hide at the time, very into fashion, but Mm -hmm. only really purchased what I could afford, you know, on my journalistic uh, budget. And in that moment I realized, okay, I don't think I am shopping for shape. I'm always concerned about the size, always concerned about the size. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, oh my gosh, I don't own the statement pieces. You said have a a real leather. (laughs) And I was like, oh, I don't even have a real leather bag. You, you, let me tell you something. You, you get people together. I'm (laughs) saying all of this to say you get us together. We think (laughs) we are out doing ourselves, but we are really missing the mark as it relates to having (laughs) what we need to show up as our best selves. Because it's one thing to have the authentic intelligence to show up as you are from day one, but you can do that and be strong and wrong. Okay? I'm tired yes. of being the bad. Or you can look a mess and, and they won't, yeah. They won't if tell it, you. If you look a mess, they won't hear your message. They won't hear your message. If you look a mess, you are un, you are immediately undermining all of the hard work that you have done. Mm. It's just is. This is why you're it the is. expert. So... <laughs> I am, I am glad that you learned so much and I don't mean to like pull people by the, by the edges or get, you know, get their edges, but <laughs> we need it. I, I feel like a lot of, we need to have honest conversations about this. Yeah. And, and, and this is stuff that a lot of women beat themselves up on because they don't know it or they think they should, or they feel so bad that they then opt out. And my point is this, just like you would hire a trainer or a, a therapist or a coach, there's experts in this field and it's okay to get help and, and and it's worth making the effort because it matters. And that size and shape thing, if we can, I, that's a, that is a whole new level of freedom. I hope you found when knowing that your shape and your size are not the same. Can you tell people the difference between shape and yes. size and then the different shapes? Absolutely. Uh, I'll try to do my best to do the shapes without visual images. But the, the biggest thing is when it comes to size versus shape is this. Your size is a figment of someone's imagination. By that, I mean that the corporate office of wherever you're, whatever brand you're looking at determines what a size six or a size eight means based on their target customer. So when I worked in corporate offices of like Old Navy, we had a target customer who shopped at places like Target, um, Target was another brand, uh, maybe even Walmart, JCPenney. So we took what those size six at one brand, those other brands would look like and say, if she's shopping there, she probably wants our clothes to fit the same way. So this size six means this measurement. And then we would size up or down. 
when I worked at Banana Republic, which is down the hall, they're all owned by the same company, mind you. Mm-hmm. Banana Republic's target customer shopped somewhere else. They had they shopped at Ann Taylor, they shopped at Bloomingdale's, possibly shopped at J. Crew, and that size six on those brands fits different than a Walmart size six. So Banana Republic size six fit different, mm-hmm. and so size changes based on brand. It has nothing to do with who you are. Size is a rough estimate of your weight and your height. Rough estimate, right? So again, size can fluctuate based on the brand and based on the cut of something. Your shape is where you hold most of your weight. So if, for example, two, there could be two size tens and one size 10 could be wearing a size 10 in her hips and she has more weight on her hips and another size 10 has more weight in her tummy. So the waistband fits her, but might be big in the, in the butt or hips. So that's why it's important to learn what your shape is because then you can fluctuate with size. So for example, I am what they call a pear shape where I'm bigger on the bottom, smaller on the top. If there is a dress that is cut straight up and down, like a shift dress, I have to wear a size 12 and get that altered in my bust be to make it smaller. It won't, you know, I have to make it to fit my hips, but it's too big on my bust. But if I find a dress that's in a A line shape, which has more forgiving of a cut on the bottom, I can go down to a size eight because that's where it fits me in the chest. So don't get caught up on what the size of the garment is. Try every single size on until you get the right fit. Do not, if you have to go up a size, nobody knows the tag. They just know when something don't look right. And then go get it altered if you need to. Go get it. A tailor is something that we all need to. Yes. I just said a lot right there, but hopefully, hopefully y'all got that. No, that's good. You know, there's the pear shape, hourglass. Is there a such thing as pear, hourglass? Apple? There absolutely is hourglass. There's pear. (laughs) hourglass the apple which is where you kind of hold your weight in your tummy and then there's the inverted triangle which means you have uh, broad shoulders but great legs and then there is the rectangle which is straight up and down got it and all of these are um it's not tried and true or no one some people are like i'm a true pear shape but sometimes there's fluctuation between a square and an apple and and try not to get too caught up on all the minutia details. The purpose is, is if you know that you have a bit of a tummy, you want your clothes to be more forgiving on the top half and more tighter and fitter on the bottom. And vice versa, if you are smaller up top, you want to have fitted clothes on your top half and more loose forgiving things on the bottom. That's good. That's expert advice. A lot of us do not know <laughs> our shapes and we wear unflattering, you know, apparel Absolutely. for so long. I love that you said, you know, if you're a mess, your message will get lost. I'm paraphrasing, but that's really true. It's hard (laughs) to connect with people. Mm -hmm. We're shallow. Okay. Let me tell you something. Us humans, we We are are. shallow. If you don't come- Well, the human brain does that for protection. The human brain makes snap judgments about people based on what they see as a matter of self-preservation. Mm. Like we have to make a snap judgment if we like someone, if we don't like someone, are they safe? Can we trustworthy? Like that goes back to our our way of, of making sure that we're okay. So our image matters because the brain is making all these assumptions very, very quickly. We're not, I mean, we're shallow, but that's why. <laughs> I appreciate you. <laughs> you know, but it's hard to connect with people when they don't look the part, right? And I no. remember being told, you know, my dad was a stickler for this. Like he was in to fashion and he always wanted to make sure that his daughters looked the part. Like, I'm not going to look this way and you look this way. Mm-hmm. And then in college, right, at Bennett, they were like pearls, pantyhose, undergarments. We had to go yeah, to you got the, the real, You got the real deal. It was wild. And I didn't understand why they cared so much for maybe a split second. And I got it very quickly, right? Especially as Black women, how we show up matters. You know, it's not about being snatched, but you need to be, you know, sucked in and you should look smooth. Make the effort. And make the effort. Yes. Yep. Yep. And it's a blessing that you got that training that early. Like I didn't, a lot of, a lot of college students don't get that. So it's, and then you go out interviewing and either if you're lucky to get the job, then you're on the workplace and you're not learning these good habits. So then you're wondering why you're not getting promoted and everybody else is, you know, that's what they call executive presence. That's the unspoken thing that can, can really make or break your career. So it's a blessing that you got that at home and got that at, at college. You know, it really is. And I count it as one 
one of the things that I've learned though, post, you know, my graduate experience is that it's an ongoing process. Like you always have to be Mm -hmm. learning about style because your body changes, (laughs) you know, the way you see yourself at times can change. And it is so important to be, yes, in healthy relationship with yourself. Can you touch on that a little bit? Because, you know, everybody's not going to have the body of a 22 year old, you know, and add 34, (laughs) you know, 40, 53, 60, things start to do whatever they want as they should (laughs) as they should right like there's there's babies that happen there's what i call pandemic pounds happening for all of us Um, you know life happens to us right pandemic pounds and to me it's all about giving yourself grace knowing that life is happening and it's also about being present to who you are so when you acknowledge who you are in the present moment what your lifestyle is what your weight is what your size or your shape is when you honor that in the present, you can let go of the past. So like there are so many women who are holding on to clothes that were before the baby or before they gained weight. And they, you know, that's the goal weight to get back into. And I ask when you walk in the closet and see those, do you feel good about yourself every morning when you see the woman that you used to be? No, let's honor who you are right now. So it's, that's good. it really is. It's so, and, it, and when you, and honestly, and even in my own story that I talk about in the book is, when I moved to Atlanta, got really depressed, hated my job, was not happy in the relationship I was in. And I had all these clothes from when I lived in New York. And this was a reminder of how I had failed. And I would start every morning feeling like a failure, then would go to to go get crap fast food in the morning. And just like, just my day would just go downhill from there because I started off feeling like a failure. When I finally bought clothes that fit the size that I was, and I said, oh, if I can look this good and like myself at a size 14, what would happen if I stopped eating the chicken biscuit every morning mm. and actually went to the gym? And that motivated me to get to the weight that I wanted to because I was honoring who I was first. You know what? I, oh my gosh, <laughs> I'm done here. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done here. Let me, you, you're bringing me back to one of the quotes from the book. A few quotes. New clothes are hard to wear when you, when old beliefs are ruling your identity. That just, mm-hmm. that reminds me of going to that closet when you can no longer fit things yep. and then making that decision. Yep. And then you talk about honoring yourself, right? That is such. Have to. Oh, so many of you us. have to. You have to. Do honor. not. I don't know why we have this idea. And if we don't, who will? You know, we think it's vain to honor ourselves. Totally. I had this conversation with myself the other day. I was looking for jackets and I'm preparing to head back east. And I'm like, okay, well, Lydia, you want to be warm. But I'm like, okay, Lydia, you're also on this budget and you have to be strategic and you're doing this whole bi-coastal thing. And I was like, so does that mean you don't deserve a new and warm and and fitting jacket? Mm -hmm. And I was like, where are you getting yeah. that from? And I'm like, okay, Lydia, let's let's drop the scarcity mindset. I'm glad you checked yourself. I, I yes. had to. There are so many conversations yes. I have to have with myself, Morgan. And I, there, I believe there are so many conversations we have to have with ourselves as we choose to show up as we are Absolutely. in the present. I have worn yep. clothes inside out, okay? Sneakers just done, <laughs> boots done, jackets done, seams busting. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Like you said, you can tell how someone is doing or what they think about themselves based on how they dress. I have struggled with that. And I think so many of us have been there and we think we're doing ourselves a favor by wearing these things out so we can mm-hmm. get our money's worth. And I'm like, no, you're not getting your money's worth. I think you're struggling with your words. And I have been yes. there. Oh, Oh, say that one more time. You're not getting your money's worth. You're struggling with your worth. Yes. You know? Yes. I have been there. Yes, you are worthy of a new coat that keeps you warm. And it's not about spending frivolously, but that that's so true. That scarcity mindset or I'm not good enough or I don't deserve says who? And if you don't think you deserve X, Y, and Z, ain't nobody else going to think you do. 
Man. Ain't nobody else. You know, earlier you talked about uh, dressing essentially for success, right? But I really appreciated Mm -hmm. the point you made beyond the the workplace. Dressing to attract your tribe. Now, Mm. I can say that you are not a shallow being. You dress to the (laughs) nines. I'm like, yo, okay. Clearly, let me go through your closet and get it tailored to be shorter, right, in length. But... One of the other things I can say is that when you're photographed with your tribe, there is consistency in the photo. Mm. And I say that because (laughs) it's like you guys are on the same vibration from what I can see. All my friends fine. (laughs) They are. Y'all bad. Y'all bad. I'm not going to lie. Why would I do that? Right? But you're on the same vibration and you all look like you care about one another enough to look good as a unit. Mm. Can we talk about that a bit? That. Because there's this there's I this, love that. there's this thing we do as women, right? Sometimes, you know, there are some of us who want to look the best. There's like this little popularity contest that people have going and it could be unspoken, mm. right? But you talk about you you spoke about dressing to attract your tribe and I think that is brilliant. So many of us are reevaluating where we are and our friends. And I'm like, how do we do that in a very real and honest way? Yeah, I think that's a, that's a, I hadn't thought of that in that way. Thank you for making me think of this in in this perspective. I want to say two things about that. I think like attracts like, right? So the more you show up for yourself and as your lifestyle changes and you become in alignment with who you are, your friends and who you are around should change. If it's not, then you are holding on to people that need to be let go of. Like, right. So the more you elevate to higher vibration, you'll attract people who do the same thing. And it's also about if I love you, if you and I, I'm an only child, but I have sisters and my girlfriends are like my sisters. And if I love you, I'm going to be honest with you, right? This doesn't look good on you or, and there's a way to say that out of love. And it's also, Oh, if, if, if Lauren is up in the ante and, and looking good where we go here, I represent her in some ways. Like I want to, I want to, I want to match her flight. It's not a competition, but it's again, we represent each other and, and we're family. I want you to do well. I want you to look well. So I'm going to be honest with you and I'm going to, I'm going to honor and respect our friendship and show up in that way also, but do not get caught up in conformity either. It's a balance, mm. right? So like all of my girlfriends and us, we are our best versions of ourselves. We're not trying to be someone that we're not and we show up in our own unique ways and we support each other and help each other in that way. But it's also not about trying to look like your best friend or coveting the other thing or or wishing that you had her. I mean, sometimes I wish I had my other friend's boobs, like they have really great boobs, but like, it's (laughs) not, it's not about jealousy or anything like that. So there's a balance and of, of honoring your friends and dressing for your tribe and, 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 and making sure that all of you are, all of you are on your A game but it's also not about losing yourself to your tribe. Mm. You know, especially really, for young women, you know, like that. Yes. I, I don't want you to lose your identity or feel like you have to dress like so and so to be accepted. It's not that. It's when you look good in your best way. Like that orange blazer example, your friends around you will take notice and raise to your raise to the occasion as well. There's a quote here in the worthy wardrobe, wearing something just because it's a status symbol is insecurity. That's rich. And I think it's so fitting for this part of the conversation. The Worthy Wardrobe. I love the title of your book. Thank you. I do because so many of us struggle with self-worth. Yeah. So many of us do. And I, it sounds I like I was about to do. cry, but it just makes me cringe. Yes, we all do. Let me tell you something. Yeah. This part of this, the human experience. It is. I love that you have this tatted on you. And we are not going to have a 20 minute conversation about me punking out on this tattoo. But it's something that I wanted to get tatted on me as well. But tell me more about your decision to title your book. The Worthy Wardrobe, and why you had to get it inked on you. Because you tatted up mommy out here in these streets. <laughs> I am tatted up here. So The Worthy Wardrobe came. Um, I can't take full credit for it. My my book writing professor and I were having a conversation 
midway through the book and he's like, Hey, what's your goal? What do you, what do you want to, what, what's your goal for the book? And what's the goal for the work that you do? And I kept saying, I want women to know their worth. I want women to know that they're worthy. I didn't feel worthy of being seen. And that's what it is. And he's just like, Oh, the worthy wardrobe. And I'm like, damn, that's it. And that's where the title came from. And it's the work that I have done on myself is when I didn't feel worthy, I didn't dress like it. And when clients hire me who don't feel worthy, it is the most painful experience because they don't like anything that I pull for them because they don't like themselves. Like until you like and love who you are, no matter what you wear, you're not going to like in the mirror, right? Like, and, and that goes back to your comment about labels and designers. Your worth does not come from somebody's name brand on your chest or on your purse. I love clothes. I like how I feel in them, but I'm not using a designer brand to validate me. And that's a big difference that I think in our culture is so, so important to make. Mm. Oh, I had to take a deep breath. Oh, then you asked, I got a tattoo of it. I got worthy tattooed on my wrist. And when Lydia and I first talked y'all, she had mentioned that she was looking to get one too. So I was like, this is the perfect time to do it. But yes, I got worthy tattooed to remind myself because I don't write what I don't experience. And I need that reminder that I'm worthy of everything that I desire and and we're not taught that often. Amen. We are not. You know, your book has truly set the standard for style guides, according to me, right? So just tell everybody oh, I said you. it or they'll hear it because a lot of these style guides out here are one dimensional, you know, buy this, buy that, or have the essentials and you'll be good. But I haven't seen much that speaks to us. And I'll be very honest about that. Yes, there are other Black women who are talking about style and fashion and are experts, but it doesn't seem authentic and it doesn't take this holistic approach, right? When you talk about worthiness and self-love, being self-aware, having this authentic intelligence, I honestly am drawn back to you as an expert, because you are showing up the way that you do, right? You're willing to have these conversations. You know, I, I think it's dope that, you know, others are like, oh, I've been dressing myself since I was seven and I've always loved fashion. I'm like, wow, that is really cute, right? <laughs> um, but it's not transformative. You know, there is this experience that people are having with you um, where at some point in the process, it's almost like they're reintroduced to themselves. Yeah, that's the best part of my work. I love that. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's the best part. You love it and it's the best part, but what does that what does that do for you? Oh, I think it's just um confession. For when I I, I worked in corporate retail, worked in clothes, I I um, I, and I did this before I did the styling thing. I thought, oh, clothes are so superficial. Uh, my dad didn't quite understood what I did. Like my friends were like doctors and lawyers. And I was like, oh, this is such a, like a, 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 like a shallow. And then when I became the stylist and I, these women like in them, there's a moment every time with a client where she looks at herself and that, and then she sees herself, like just how you described it. That to me is my ministry. Like that's what I like. That's what I'm here to do. Is that when you feel good, you then do good for someone else. And I just, it brings me joy to see another woman love herself and 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 feel seen. It's just I can't quite describe. It. Like I get the tingles and and it's for me this book or the work that I do. This book is a good book, not because I wrote it, but because God wrote it. Like I'm purely the vessel through what I get to do. To through whom God gave me this message. And that's the same with my clients. Like when, when clients come with me to TJ Maxx or Nordstrom Rack, they're like, oh my God, like I never find this kind of stuff here for myself either. And I'm like, me either. I say a prayer before I go into the store and <laughs> like things just come off the racks for me. So, you know, it really is like a, it's a divine experience for me that I get to experience with other people. That's why I love this work. And I, and I love this message that I get to share. You know, what I really am grateful for is how the Worthy Wardrobe is outlined, and I will say designed, you know, by the Most High in you. And you have it here as an undressing of all of the negativity we have clothed ourselves in throughout the years, 
revealing the connection between soul and style. To me, that calls me higher. Mm, I love that. It, it really that. does, Morgan, because it it reminds me that one, I am worthy to feel and look and show up as my best self, but that it's okay to take that stuff off that I've been wearing. Yes. You know, I remember hearing a, a sermon and I believe it was t- entitled The Coronation of a Lie. And this mm. is what that reminds me of. Um, and I remember writing about it in a poem. And we crown ourselves in so many things. And I love it here, right? We clothe ourselves in so many things. And it's important to remember at some point that those things no longer belong to yeah. us. Like we have yes. to outgrow that the Mm -hmm. same way you know that we're like i can't fit it anymore like it is it does become unfitting and unbecoming at some point i call those the grave clothes i heard a sermon um called right before easter sunday and it was about shedding your grave clothes and i actually quote i wrote a blog about it then i brought that up in the book because yes those are the those grave clothes are what's keeping you dead what's keeping you from not living your life so it's Mm. crowning like a crown of lies or your grave clothes, whatever you call it, you have to let that stuff go, sis. You have to. Mm. Morgan, where did you come from? (laughs) So good. I'm telling you, that's why it's not even me. Like it really is. Like if this is, if this is not a commercial for meditation and for finding whatever faith walk you were on, that is what like, cause I, there's no way that I could have wrote this book solo because I for real for real didn't start until January of 2020 and I was procrastinating with my book writing program and it was done by like April, May and that ain't nothing but God. Like all 236 no. pages, 45,000 words, that ain't nothing but God who like put that message through me that fast. So all credit, all credit to God for that one. I love it. You know, there's a part of this conversation that I just realized I skipped over and it was about femininity. Oh. And I, I just want to touch on that. I have to before okay. we wrap this conversation up because I feel like we've touched on it a bit, but it's been very like, oh, okay. Right. But femininity. Oh my goodness. How we don't like to talk about femininity. Mm. Your book touches on that. I believe that when you show up, I see femininity and Mm -hmm. it's really, it's a conversation that I want to have all the time. And I believe that as black women, we should be having more often because it's hard to be feminine and then be sexy and be okay with it. Or show mm-hmm. up as such, you know, mm-hmm. when there is a high powered woman who is feminine and knows she's sexy, but it's about her business, she is admired. But we never yes. hear about that journey, um, to her showing up that way. I have to ask you, like, when did, I know you said in 2016 is when you began to like, you know, do a lot of your work and see yourself and become visible. Right. But what's, what's the story behind you tapping into the power of your femininity? Ooh, Lydia, I don't know if I fully have, to be honest. And I, I'm, I'm flattered that you see me as feminine because I grew up so tall with the deep voice and like I walk like Patrick Ewing so like I never really felt feminine but I will say and there's a a chapter here in the book titled sexiness where it was the last chapter that I had to write and I've built when I was writing the book I had an online community of beta readers who are reading the book with me and giving me feedback and I asked them how do you define sexy and as something that I've struggled with. Um, it's one thing to like clothes and be seen and show up in the powers in the, in the space of professionalism. But I have often felt uncomfortable with attention from men. And so we had a great conversation with um, these women shared with me their stories of, of how femininity and sexiness has been in their perception of it's been influenced by rape, 
by sexual harassment, by men grabbing them at the subway station in New York. And it's a, it's this loaded bag of how can you own who you are? And I call I, I come to realize that it's sexy self mastery. When you own who you are, then that's the sexiness and confidence that exudes. And we can rely or choose to lean into that femininity as much or as little as we want to. And I and I, and I say that because sexiness and quote, quote quote unquote femininity are not the same thing. And I think there's some women who are incredibly sexy who we wouldn't necessarily define as overtly feminine and then there's some women who are very feminine who we don't require or pretty that we don't qualify as sexy so it's there's it's it's complicated <laughs> it's all it's it's mm. complicated but that was one it of is, my favorite know, chapters sexiness is a complicated thing when it comes to as women how do we feel safe how do we show up and 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 ooze that sex appeal but also being appropriate and feeling confident in who we are i love it i love it you know, I had to Google it. I'm like, okay, let me get these definitions in real time. So sexiness is defined as the quality of being sexually attractive or alluring. Mm. And then femininities, qualities or attributes regarded as characteristics of women. That is very different. Yeah. That's different. And you know, and what is like one femininity thing? is very vague. Very feminine is very vague. And actually, when I was doing the research for the book, there was a definition that I read that said prettiness is something that the, like people like to look at and sexiness is something that inspires action. So there's a reason why and mm. in, in, in action in the way of, of and I, I talk about this in the book, of women who can kind of own their sexiness in the appropriate way inspire action as in signing a client as in people want to give them money as in you make a new friend you know you make a connection pretty people we like to look at but we often don't want to we just want to stare at them from afar and women who are sexy and confident and unapologetic about who they are that inspires us to act or be different in our own way that's right i like that isn't that a cool like definition that. I really, I really do think that is cool. And there have been people who've written about pretty privilege, but I'm yeah. like, okay, number one, we need this next uh, chapter in your book or the next book to be about owning that sexiness because that's good. And I know you've written about it, but I'm like, I need an entire book from you. And I, you know, it's so funny you mentioned oh. pretty privilege because I was going back. I didn't add that in the book and I've gone back and forth. And so the next version is going to have that. You just sent me the sign. I need to talk about pretty privilege, pretty privilege versus sexy because they are different. Yeah, it's a real thing. And a lot of us are trying to figure it out and it takes us a while, mm -hmm. but it's a very intimate journey. And I believe it has to start within and not with comparison. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm even just thinking this is kind of random, but we've all dated or we've been around like the pretty boy who like everything came easy to and he was probably the worst type of boyfriend and then we've dated like the sexy <laughs> dude who had the swag who wasn't necessarily that quote-unquote right? pretty or like had those features but he had the swag and was like and you're just lusting after him and, he, and hopefully made a good boyfriend but there's a difference right there's a swag boy and then there's a pretty boy same thing for us yeah it's pretty so privilege true. don't like oh yeah gosh. don't let pretty privilege make you lazy <laughs> well, well, on look. that note, right? On that note, look, sis, okay? Uh, she said what she said. I didn't say it, but she said it. And I agree, okay? <laughs> oh, my goodness. You know, I feel like I want you to give us some tips or some advice. And I'm not sure what it is that I want to ask you for because you've given us so much. But so, you know what? So let me do this. Let me ask, is there anything else that you feel led to share that we have not talked about? Nope. Nope. Okay. So now I got to come up with a good question because I'm just like, well, my, I my, need my it all, it all goes down to this. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. Like mm. that is the, if, if, if you listen to this entire podcast and the only thing I want you to take away from is that no matter your size, no matter your shape, no matter if you think you are been told you're too dark or too light or your hair is too this or hair is too like whatever you've been told about yourself or you think about yourself. <laughs> It doesn't matter. You are worthy because you are here with a purpose and God made you. And 
the sooner you can accept that and live that and show that worthiness, the easier life becomes. I love that. I'm taking that for myself as well. You know, I think I've come up with the one thing that I'd love for you to like help us with immediately. And what you got? it's because you are this style expert. I'm envisioning my closet um, in Harlem because I've been living it to a drawer here in the Bay Area since mm-hmm. I just like decided to come home. <laughs> but what is one closet or wardrobe hack that we can do after we, you know, stop listening to this podcast that will make a difference in our lives today or tomorrow or whenever? I think the I'm going to give you two wardrobe hacks. Um, the first wardrobe hack right now while we're home is go through your closet. As, season, like, as seasons are changing and right now, like if, as we're not wearing things as we normally are, go through and like purge what doesn't fit, what doesn't, what you don't like anymore. Um, and I often say, if you can't see it, you won't wear it. So this is a great time to get clear and get clean about what you want to look like and wear once outside does open up more. Um, that's been, I've done that therapeutically. You know, we've gone through like two seasons now in quarantine. So like my summer stuff, and right. my fall stuff, I have gone and edited ruthlessly now because I needed breathing room and space. It's not about having a lot. It's about having what you love. The second thing is when mm. outside does open is go, if there's things that you like that don't fit, but are, go get them altered or tailored. So like if, if your body changes, if you've lost weight or if you, whatever changes, if they didn't quite fit exactly like that gingham blouse that you mentioned, Lydia, that was busting, you know, you're, you're busting out of, go take that to a tailor and have snaps put in. Like do those little tweaks so that when you're ready to start wearing those things, they fit you and you can just grab them that morning of and not feel insecure or self-conscious about it. So purge and get a tailor. Oh, and one more. I got to give you one more. Okay. One more that I have been doing, like, because I am notorious for buying high heels that I can't walk in. I told y'all I walk like Patrick <laughs> Ewing. No offense, Patrick. But now that I'm home at my desk, I'm actually wearing those shoes. Like, I'm putting them on my feet and I'm walking around the house. And if I can't last, you know, X amount of hours, if I can't make it from my closet to the front door, then I'm getting rid of them. So, like, now is a good time to try to break in some shoes or decide if these shoes, you know, are really worth keeping. That's really good. So many of us have been holding on to things that no longer serve us. And if this pandemic has taught us anything, mm, yeah, right, right. You know, okay, you know what? I said that for a reason. Here goes another quote from The Worthy Wardrobe. And let me say that in English. The Worthy Wardrobe. Holding on to things that no longer serve you sends the message to God that you don't trust her enough to take care of all your needs. Look, let it go. You know what? Let it go. Let it go. Let it go, bruh. Let it go, sis. Mm -hmm. It's time. You have outgrown it. You know, look, I... We have to have like part two and three of this conversation because it's necessary. It is, it's necessary at this point, but it is time for you to drop the mic. You've done so repeatedly. Um, is this thing on? Is this thing still on? Okay. It still works great. Um, but it's officially time for you to drop the mic. So when you are ready, leave it all on the stage. Oh. That's a. When you wake up the ne- tomorrow morning, I want you to go into the mirror, stand in front of the mirror, naked, look at your entire body, get a full length mirror, look in the entire body and repeat over and over. I am perfect and I love myself over and over and over. And you are worthy. And I want you to look at really see yourself, see yourself and see the splendor and see the beauty that got made and just even the body parts and areas, instead of looking at them with a critical eye, just look at them with love and know that you're here. You're alive right now. You have a mission and a purpose and you are worthy of being seen. There you have it. Morgan, you are a gem. You really are. Thank you, Lydia. I, 
You are welcome. I am so grateful for how you've shown up and for how you are helping us get our lives and understand our worth and be in alignment as we show up, right? We have Mm -hmm. to look the part, no matter if that's on Zoom, you know, when we're showing up to meetings, if when we're on the street, subway, car, whatever, it is so important to show up as your full self. Absolutely. Let people know how they can stay connected with you, where they can go get the worthy wardrobe and, you know, be all up in your business. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at at Morgan Wider Style and it's W-I-D as in David E-R. So Morgan Wider Style. You can learn more about me at MorganWider.com and you can get the book off of Amazon um, or anywhere else books are sold online. And Lydia, I want to thank you for using your platform to give women like me the space to talk about the things that are important to us. You know, you show up in a way that allows all of us to, to do our work and to get shine. So thank you for, for living out your purpose so that you can assist those of us who are living out our purpose. Oh my goodness. You are more than welcome. And thank you. I appreciate you saying that. I really do. Yeah. Oh my gosh. There's so much love here right now. And I'm just basking in it. Ah, And I'm going to love you even more when you go get your tattoo after this conversation. (laughs) I I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. So I'm about to be tatted up in these streets. I think I'm going to get a face tat. Um, (laughs) I'm kidding. But yes. (laughs) Oh my goodness. As always, if you want to stay connected with the Get My Life Tour, be sure to visit the getmylifetour.com. Register for the newsletter. Stay connected on all social platforms at the Get My Life Tour, with the exception of Twitter, because it was too long. So it is at Get My Life Tour. If you would like to stay connected with me as I do my work journalistically and just get my life. Be sure to connect with me on Twitter, on Instagram at Lydia T. Blanco or visit LydiaTBlanco.com. We have some incredible things coming up that I cannot wait to share with you. You know, Morgan is really doing the work that matters. Mm -hmm. Being who you are and showing up as you are is important. And that is what the Get My Life Tour is all about. So thank you again, Morgan, for being who you are, for showing up as you are unapologetically and fearlessly. Thank you, friend. You are welcome. It has been real. Until the next time, I will see you right back here on the Get My Life Tour. Peace. Peace.